It's minus two out here. What are you doing? I don't know! What's going on people? How we doing? Good morning. Look how cold it is out here today. Look how cold it is out here today. It's freezing. It is like minus 20. Might not actually be that much, but it is very, very cold. And yes, welcome to the very first Nat Vlog video. This is episode one with myself, Natty. My name is actually Nathan Inge. Don't take the piss out of the last name. I know. This is where I am bringing the world of fitness in with the world of DJ and we're gonna smash the two together and yeah just see where we can go uh, it is January 2021 at the time of filming this and one of my aims for 2021 is to try and build a profile behind YouTube and try and influence as many people to do exercise and if there's any young DJs out there that want to know how to get into DJing I'm gonna go over everything and if you need tips for DJing if you want tips for fitness I am going to be getting the qualification very soon so I can do everything. We're going to combine the two together and yeah, have a bit of fun. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you do not miss a thing. And yes, if you do enjoy the video, give us a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. All support. This is something I'm looking to build for 2021. It's a new project, it's a new adventure, a new ambition. So let's get it. And in today's video, we are talking all about myself. Yeah, that's right, about myself. Yeah, now this is just a little background information video. I thought I'd kick stuff off by just letting you know who I am, giving you a bit of background information as to how I got into DJing, how I got into fitness, and yeah, what my goals and ambitions are in life, basically. So yes, we are in the world wide open. World wide open? The wide world open. Or is it the open wide world? So yes, we are going to kick things off and go all the way back to 1998. 28th of April, 1998. Look at that, look at that. He's a good looking guy, isn't he? He's a good looking guy. So yeah, I was born in Swindon in England, southwest. Um, raised up in Sirencester, a little town 20 minutes away. Um, I've been there pretty much all my life. Um, lived a pretty normal childhood, very active. Like when I say very active, I was like every single day running, footy, you name it, I was doing it. So yeah, I'm pretty appreciative that my generation is probably the last generation of kids to grow up playing Kirby, uh, football out on the streets before technology came over. Um, so yeah, I lived a pretty good childhood. Jeez. Yes, what well, I'm going to introduce one of the biggest influencers of my life, and that is my dad. There he is. See where I get the looks from. But yes, uh, he was actually a DJ before me. He started in 1980 at the age of 15, a similar age to me. Um, and he ended up going on for 36 years DJ and he was mainly a mobile DJ. So he used to do weddings, parties, um, private events. He did a few club stuff, a few events. Um, but yeah, that's how he made his living. He was also a coach driver for about 40 years as well. Um, driving coaches during the week and then DJing on the weekends. Yeah, he's basically really ill um, and he cannot work anymore and he's had to jack in the DJing, the coach driving, everything. So it's a bit crap to be fair. But I'm going to go into that a little bit later. But this is how I got into DJing. So yes, I actually started going out with my dad at a very young age. In 2004, when I was age six, I went along to a uh, family friend's wedding and I actually ended up pushing a few buttons. Um, my dad would be there, the song's about to end, he'd be like, don't push play until now. Don't wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't wait, did I? I was straight in there. And I actually got my very first decks the Christmas after that, so Christmas 2004. Jeez. Um, and it was quite apparel from an early age that I was into DJ and I was into music. I love music, I love pretty much every single kind of music. My dad was very much a parties, 80s kind of man. So yeah, I grew up around that. 
and it was quite obvious from then that I was going to be a DJ. So yes, whilst doing this, um, in 2008 I actually got into football, I joined a football team. I joined it quite late in reason to like everyone else in my year, but I love football, absolute crazy about it. Um, and I went, yeah, just went along, started playing football, got really into it in 2008, and that was kind of like as much fitness, sports, as I was doing. Yeah, it's 4 5 forward. Yeah, it's 4 5 forward. Yeah, so fast forward to 2010, I am 12 years old and at this point I was doing kids parties with my dad, just doing games, playing party stuff, trying to entertain the kids and at 12 years old I actually went out and done my very first kids party and from then on I was out pretty much every weekend with my sister um, and we used to go out every single weekend, mainly on a Sunday because my dad would be doing it on a Saturday. I'd be going out on a Sunday and doing my very own kids parties and we built quite a brand up I got quite a few residencies within schools so I was doing all their proms all their parties and yeah that was 12 years old 2010 yeah so now it's um, probably a good time to introduce my dad properly so my dad uh, he was DJing for 36 years he started in 1980 uh, at a similar age to me he's age 15 and due to his job uh, he smoked from a very young age um, and a lot of other factors. He actually developed emphysema uh, and bronchitis, which is a lung disease, and it basically kills off your cells that intake oxygen and makes breathing very, very difficult. Um, it was going to be an illness that will eventually kill him, um, so every day it gets worse and worse. Over time, it's just slowly killing him away. So if you fast forward to 2013, and we've just come back from a holiday and my dad's got a gallstone removal operation um, and he gets that done but beforehand we make a promise that we're probably gonna go for discos we're gonna properly go for things we're gonna go all out we are going all out with it and he got his gallstone operation and whilst he'd done that he actually died on the table uh, I think it's something like seven minutes recovery times six methods. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but it was something around that. And it was actually in the last 40 seconds of recovery time on the sixth method and suddenly came back to life. So very close to losing him. And it's from that moment on, it made him just go downhill very rapidly. He got very, very ill. He had to stay inside. Uh, I think he hacked his job for about a month, two months after that. So he had to retire, which was very hard for him because he was a very hard working man. Um, so it was a hard pill to swallow. Um, and he, he carried on with the DJing for a little bit. Um, I had to go out of every single thing. I had to set all the equipment up. My dad would literally ha only be able to just rock up, play music, get out of breath and go home. I'd have to do all the lumping, which I was fine with. I was learning. I was happy with it, as long as we were still out and about, I was happy. So yes, we're going to go into 2014 and it is Christmas 2014. Now, it's been just over a year since my dad's operation. Uh, he had to quit his full-time job. He was still going out and about, trying to support me as much as possible with the DJing. Um, and it came to uh, Christmas and he just got severely ill. He had a chest infection and nothing, <coughs> nothing was going to get him out of the house. He wasn't in a very good way at all. Uh, and we actually had full Christmas parties every week, uh, bookings for corporate events, companies um, in a local hotel that we were residents of. Um, and he looked at me, we had no other DJs because we had a few DJs working for us. We had no other DJs available because they were all out, it's Christmas. Every DJ is out on Christmas. So yes, in 2014, I was age 16. I had no choice but to go out and do these Christmas parties. It was my first proper party on my own. I went along with my mate Ryan. He was actually my sister's boyfriend at the time. Still one of my very, very close good mates. Um, you'll probably see some more of him. And yeah, I went there with, the, with no confidence at all so I'll see it's all right doing kids parties I was talking on the microphone with kids but doing adults obviously they're a lot older than me they are my parents age effectively so to stand in front of about 100 150 adults and have to entertain them with music and it will be music that I'm not 100% comfortable with 70s 80s 90s yep yeah, and I had to talk through the microphone as well and obviously 16 your voice does tricks on you doesn't it it does, it does tricks on you. And yeah, from that moment on, it kind of spurred me on. Um, why my dad wasn't able to do 
them anymore. He was trying to come out as much as possible. During the summer he was coming out to a few, but other than that, I was going out doing my own. It kind of spurred me on to go do my own bookings. So yeah, I was out doing my own adult discos at the age of 16 onwards. And I was doing that for a few years. So yeah, I'm gonna leave things here for a little while. I'm actually on my morning walk, it is freezing. I don't even wanna know how cold it is. It is freezing. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna hit up some slow-mos and then we're gonna go to the shop just before a workout. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> So we're just on the way to the shops. I actually look like I'm gonna rob a bank, don't I? I look like I'm gonna rob the shop rather than go to it. Carrying on with the little story that we were going over earlier. Yeah, so 2014, I was out doing my first adult uh, discos. I was going doing weddings, birthdays, you name it. I was going out on my own. Um, the only problem was that I couldn't drive. So my mum used to come out with me. I can't actually see out this window. She used to have to come back at like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and help me pack down because she was the only one that could drive the van. Luckily, I'm old enough now, obviously. Yeah, it comes to 2015. I'm still doing it. I'm, I'm out most weeks just DJing uh, for private people. And at the time, obviously, I am... How old am I? He's 16 year old. 17 year old. I went in with my teens. I'm at college, I go to college full time, Monday to Friday. Weekends I'm doing uh, weddings and stuff. And I've also got girlfriends, obviously it happens. Once upon a time, I could actually get laid. So yeah, it's 2015. Um, I am just about to hit my very first big gig performance. It is at the Phoenix Festival, which is in my local town, Sirencester. Um, and it is an annual event which is on the bank holiday August every year and it's been growing it's mad how quickly it's grown um, and yeah I got the opportunity a friend a family friend that she uh, was part of the committee and she came up to me and asked me would you like a set at the Phoenix Festival and I just bang yes I didn't know what I was playing I didn't know what they wanted I had no idea I just said yes straight away so she said she's gonna see what she can do but she can't promise any big performances. There are a lot of little tents going around. She said, so you're probably just gonna play in the morning in one of them. Don't expect anything too big. To which I thought, oh, I don't care. A performance is a performance. I'm playing at a festival. Natty is playing at his very first festival. Uh, there's a few thousand people there as well. We're approaching August and then I get told that I have actually reached the main stage not just the main stage, a midday prime time Saturday on the main stage. And I got told to just do what I want, do what I want. And at the time I was getting into mixing because obviously my past was very much just party DJing. Then I was learning how to mix house music. It was house and EDM dance music that really uh, inspired me and I was looking at this beat match I was slowly learning so yes it comes to bank holiday August weekend it's probably the most nerve-wracking I've ever been for a performance there are probably coming up to a thousand fifteen hundred people at this uh, festival the worst thing is I had to talk through the microphone I could talk through a microphone to about 200 people but I've never spoken on, on a main stage um, in front of that many people before so obviously I was pooing myself absolutely pooing it so there I am honestly probably one of my favorite gigs to date it was the gig that inspired me and showed me exactly what I want to be doing in my life so obviously I was learning music production at the time I'm not great at it so but hopefully that's something I can improve on in the future talking of production I have just found myself parking space so I'm going to shoot over there and then we're going to come back and I'm going to talk to you all about how production has kicked stuff off for me and helped me grow. Thank you. 
way back home now and whilst we are driving back I'm going to go over how mixes and production has had a big impact on my growth as a DJ. Um, I definitely recommend them to any of you that have ever thought about it that want to get into DJing, mixes are definitely a great way to get yourself out there. It acts as a portfolio, so club managers, event promoters, owners, uh, you can send them the links to your profile and they can check you out um, and they can see exactly what you're all about. So whatever genre of DJ, um, so whatever genre of DJ, so whatever genre of music you DJ and mix together, you can do absolutely anything you want, mix it all up. It's definitely a great way to get yourself out there. I've been doing it ever since 2016. Every month I've been releasing a new mix. Basically just helped me grow endlessly. It's, it's been crazy. So definitely, if you are a DJ that wants to be recognized, get your mixes out on, on Mixcloud or Soundcloud. Both free apps to get and you could definitely get a lot of benefit from them. Yes, we have landed back home. Home, I'm just reversing that to the drive. So yes, we're back home. We've got the protein shakes, which wasn't actually what we went out to get, but we have got everything we need. Um, I'm actually going to end the video here just because I don't want things to drag too long. If you are still listening now, thank you very much for the support. I really do appreciate you. Thank you for listening this far. As I said, this is a brand new adventure for me. I'm all new to it, so I am learning with everything that I'm doing at the moment. Learning, because that's what life's about. Learning, improving and just trying to get better every day. I'm gonna end things here, but make sure to tune in next week where we are gonna be going over a run, a leg workout, and I'm gonna be talking about how I made my dreams of becoming a DJ a full-time reality. Honestly, you don't wanna miss it. But until then, thank you very much for listening. Peace, and I'll see you soon.